right, so I've gotten a few comments um, about the LEGO video. Basically, people are trying to convert their objects into a mesh and then everything disappears. So they need to realize it, realize all the instances, and then everything breaks because the original setup is meant to work with instances and uh, not be realized. So to realize the instances, I'll just show you a, a quick setup. I just have the same beach ball from that uh, from that tutorial, and I'm just gonna set this up very quickly and then talk about it. So uh, it might jump around in the beginning because I'm, I'm basically just getting to the point in the video where you need to start changing stuff. So it will jump around quite a bit while I'm doing this, but I will explain stuff after, so don't worry about it. Okay, so we're at the point now where I set it up similar to in the video. So basically what you have is you have the mesh to volume right here. It turns it turns everything into a volume. Then you distribute points inside of it, which is creating this grid. You're instancing cubes onto the points, and then you are adding a color attribute that is gotten from the image that it's using for the textures. So we can actually take a look at this. It's just supposed to be looking at Let's see, it's supposed to be looking at all of the face corners right here. So it is dependent on, you know, the, the mesh right here. So it's looking at all the face corners and that's how it's determining what color to place like that. So the main problem with when you try to, wait a sec, where is the preview node? Because there's, it's still being previewed. Is it behind? I don't know why it does that. We need to get rid of the viewer node. Okay, so the main problem with this setup is it's storing the attribute into the instances. So as soon as you try to realize it, we can get a realize instances node right here. It's gonna break the color because it's not instances anymore. So basically what we have to do is we have to realize the instances first, and then we need to not store it in instances. We need to store it in something else like in the face. So we can store it in the face right there, but it's still not working. And that's because of how we set the material up. So if we go over to the shader tab right here, and again, this is just like in the Lego video, you can see that I have the name of the attribute that we created over in geometry nodes. I just named it color. So it has to be the same as that. And I'm plugging it into the base color, but this is expecting instances also. So we need to change this to geometry and now it should work. But you might notice some things that are kind of weird. They're uh, a little different. So this does work, you know, but you can see right here, this whole block is not a single color. So I have found a kind of way around this. It's not the best approach, but it does make it more accurate. Um, and the main way to do that is to scale it down really small right here basically so when it's checking the color instead of like checking for a color at a point like right here all of the points are really close to the center like packed in really close so all of them you know all the faces of the cube should be closer to each other and that means it's closer to they're all closer to the same color when it's checking that against the original model you want to scale it down and then you want to scale it back up to you know the original size right here so the way you could do that pretty easily is just with a scale elements right here we can put one before and we can put one after the main idea is we want to scale it down really small and then we want to scale it back up kind of by like the by the reciprocal by by the inverse amount basically if you scale this to half you want to scale this up by two so we can do that pretty easily easily and automate it with a value we can get a value and we can get a divide so let's get a math node set to divide. Let's set this to one for now. We want um, this one to be small and we want this one to be big. So let's see, the way we should do this is set this to one and then we plug this into the second. So if we set this to two, this should be one over two, which is like one half. We can plug this one in here because this is gonna be small. And then we can plug this into the second one like that. So now, hopefully when we turn this value up, it gets a little more accurate. And if you turn it up too high, it's just gonna be kind of weird. It, it, I think it gets slower the higher you turn it up, but let's see, just crank it to the max. Set this to something like a thousand, just to see. It loads pretty well still. Let's see if I can turn it even higher, 10,000 like that. So it's not perfect, but it did clear up our issue right here. You know, if we, if we, if we mute this, you can see 
it's scaling it down to the point of it being like you can't really see it anymore because it's so small. So it's basically comparing all of the points that you're scaling really close to each other. It's comparing it to the original mesh right here and you know trying to find which which face corner it's closest to so but yeah here are the nodes most of this is going to be the same as in the lego video but the main difference is that you want to scale it down you want to scale it up right there that's for the color accuracy you need to realize the instances and then right here you're um you're capturing on the face domain not the instances anymore and also on the shader side make sure that you have the attribute set to geometry and not instancer anymore. And just to show you that it does work, we should be able to right click this and convert to mesh. And uh, and now it's a mesh. We go into edit mode. I should be able to just like select any of these blocks and move it around like that. I don't know how this will look in the UV editor. Someone was asking about like if this retains the UVs. So let's take a look. Are they even here? I do not know. It would be on the base color right there. So I don't see anything. I think the UV map gets destroyed. All right, so experimental part of the uh, of this video now. I believe whenever you convert something to a mesh, the attributes that would be, you know, vertex groups or UV maps or color attributes, I think they all get pushed to the attributes right here. So I think we should still have, hopefully, if figured we would still have the UV map, but maybe we don't. There's color, material index, position, hmm. face, color. Maybe we don't. Maybe it's just destroyed. So I'm going to go back just until this is geometry nodes again. So I guess the way it is figuring out the color then is that the color attribute still exists. And if we go to the shader editor, we have it right here. So it's not using a UV map at this point. I guess if we wanted to retain the UV map, we would have to change the setup to be UV map based, most likely. So maybe instead of, sorry, bear with me. This is different because it's not, um, it's not based on storing the color anymore, but I guess you could instead get the face corner and just use the UV map right here instead but we would also have to change this to a vector since this is a vector right here. Store this. So we're, we're, we're saving the UV map at this point. Put this into the value. This is also a vector. And I'll just name this um, UV map. And then this is gonna break. Actually, we can store this in the face still, and that's fine, hopefully. We go over to shading. So now instead of doing this, we would want, uh, well, actually, I'll keep this here because I'm gonna use that. I'm just gonna change this to UV map. Hopefully I spelled that right. Capital M, capital M. Good, okay. We can get an image texture. Make sure that it's using the beach ball. And then we plug this into the vector because this is the, the UV map that we're generating basically. And that should, that should work the same. This is gonna be so long, it's gonna be silly. All right, I'm just gonna duplicate this just so that we have a backup. It's easier than, than uh, control Z undoing. But now you can see that we actually do have a UV map stored in this one because we created it in geometry nodes. So hopefully if I convert this to a mesh, it gets pushed to here, but now we can select it, use this dropdown, convert attribute to, let's see, we have mode, I'll use generic. I don't know if that's gonna work. Face corner vector and uh, it didn't it didn't convert it into anything, did it? Convert attribute. We don't want it as a vertex group. I thought you could just convert it to a UV map, 2D vector. Maybe that's what we want. Okay, yeah. So it we did we are able to turn it into a UV map. Now if we go to this, okay, now it actually exists in here, so that works properly. So all right, yeah, whole roundabout solution but you can retain the uv map but you do have to do it differently where instead of storing the color you're storing the uv map you don't actually need the image in here because you're doing all that on the shader end you're um, looking at the original geometry capturing the uv map and then you are adding it back to the new geometry that you're creating right here with all of this stuff with the you know instances and then you realize them. I believe you do need to use these sample indexes. You can't just plug it in directly. 
because because at this point it's checking to see like oh let's look for the uv map but there isn't a uv map anymore because you broke a bunch of stuff so you have to reference the original geometry and that's why it's you know plugged in like this you know i can show you it should just break if i plug if i try to capture the uv map right here it's all about context where like right here it's you're asking it for an attribute and so you know if we instead just tell it to look for a uv map right here at this point it's just going to look to this one right here and if it doesn't have a uv map then it's just going to be broken but because we have everything piped from like the beginning it should work fine all right um hopefully that made like any sense at all to uh people who actually need help <laughs> yeah I, I hope it helps if it doesn't i guess let me know on discord and i can help you better there it's really not easy to help people in youtube comments because they can't share screenshots and whatnot but anyway come to discord if you actually need help and yeah have a good one